Yes. All right. Thanks everyone for joining us today for this webinar. So today we'll be talking about mirroring within XOR and learning to keep your SecOps in sync. Quick introductions. So my name is Elliot Mitchell. I'm a customer success architect. I've been on the team for a little over a year now. Um, I have 10 years cybersecurity experience across multiple industries and domains. And for my hobbies, I enjoy hiking and log pick, lock picking when I'm not chasing my one and a half year old son around. And also presenting today will be Abel and I'll turn it over to him for a quick introduction. Thank you, Elliot. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Abel Santa Marina, and I'm also a customer success engineer here with Palo Alto Networks. I've been with the company for over a year with, with the XOR and helping customers build their use cases and continue their security automation initiatives. So in my free time, I like doing CTI security escape rooms, uh, in addition to some photography and playing my electric guitar. So back to you, Elliot. All right, thank you. So for the agenda today, high level agenda, what we're gonna be covering. First, how to enable mirroring. We're gonna look at integration configurations, common configuration errors, um, what solutions support mirroring, since this isn't across all integrations. We're also gonna discuss classifiers and mappers, um, advanced settings with integrations for the mappings or mirrorings. We're also gonna discuss limitations with mirroring because there are some limitations that are lesser known. And then also some common issues we see across the board when configuring mirroring and common troubleshooting for that. So now to kick it off, we'll go into the why and the how with mirroring. So high level, you know, for those that aren't leveraging mirroring or want to about it, you mirroring at a high level is essentially going to allow you to have that single pane of glass with an XOR. You know, we know a lot of teams are using XOR, but then might also have different ticketing systems. A lot of teams will have ServiceNow set up or JIRA for issue management. So that can get kind of messy if you have incidents coming from each system. Or for example, you know, most common thing we see is, hey, we have a security incident come in and we also need to track it with a ServiceNow ticket or from the incident that's in XOR, you need to create a ServiceNow ticket you know, for another team to action on, but you need to track that. And what mirroring allows is for that tracking across both systems. So you don't have to hop between both systems to update tickets or track information. So with the mirroring, you know, we support unidirectional and bidirectional mirroring with these integrations. So depending on what you have set up, for example, if you have bidirectional with ServiceNow, then you can create a ticket in ServiceNow and it'll be created in XOR as an incident. And then you'll be able to update from either of those systems for that incident, and it will mirror back to the other system. So, you know, common use case, you create an incident in XOR, it will create an incident in ServiceNow or a ticket in ServiceNow. And let's say you're going to have most of the team working from XOR, so they'll be working from the XOR platform, updating information for the ticket. Well, with the mirroring, now that information is going to be pushed over to the incident or the ticket in ServiceNow, and vice versa, if you have team members who don't have access to XOR, they can still go into ServiceNow and update the information as needed in there, or what they're used to, and that gets kicked back to XOR as well. So you don't have to worry about stuff getting out of sync or, you know, hey, this team member only has access to ServiceNow, but not XOR, you know, how are we gonna get that information that we need from the ticket? Um, you know, the bi-directional and unidirectional piece just depends on what your organization needs. Sometimes, you know, sometimes you could have where you just want to receive information from ServiceNow, but you don't need to push back out or vice versa. You just want to push the information from XOR to ServiceNow or JIRA, you know, whatever you're pushing to. So it just depends on what your organizational needs. Obviously, it is most common for mirroring. Integrations that support mirroring is right now. So the two biggest ones are going to be ServiceNow in JIRA. Those are the two most common ones we can figure with ServiceNow being by far the most common. Other integrations and tools that support mirroring are gonna be Cortex XDR, Splunk, Q-Radar, 
And then a little different, the XOR to XOR. So where the other ones are tools, the XOR to XOR is really specifically for multi-tenant environments. So you can mirror incidents across two tenants. Um, that's really for specific cases that you have going on. Um, but that is an option available in the system. All right. So the first piece we're going to look at is configurations of the integration. And so first thing is that different these different integrations, you know, I listed six, different integrations will have different configuration options, but there are a few configuration options that are going to be consistent across all of them. So the first one is usually going to be the mirroring direction, whether you want incoming, outcoming, or both. So obviously the incoming would be from you know the tool into XOR. So for example, from Jira into XOR. There's outgoing from XOR into the tool or both, which is that bi-directional mirroring piece. One of the other common ones is going to be entry tags. And what's that, what that is important for is, so the system knows what it needs to sync or mirror to the systems. So for example, on the right-hand side over here, I just have a screenshot of the ServiceNow integration configuration. And obviously you can see at the top, incident mirroring direction, but then underneath that, the entry tags. And so that's important because when you're working with an XOR, let's say you just type in a note or you want to add, you know, a task results to the ServiceNow ticket or have them be pushed over, then all you need to do is make sure that you tag whatever it is that you want to be mirrored with either comments, if you want to be a comment or work notes so that it, the system now knows it's going to mirror that information back over to ServiceNow as either a comment or a work note. And then for files as well, you know, how do we tell the system that we want the file to either be pulled in from ServiceNow or pushed from XORs this is very similar. We add an entry tag to that, to that result so that we can tell it we want it to be mirrored across. Custom fields can also be defined too. So by default, maybe never, not everything is coming over the system. And that could be because you created custom fields. So for that, if there are any custom fields that you create in the system, then you need to make sure that those are defined. And there's additional setting in here that we'll look at um, once we get to the demo about custom fields to discuss that. Um, and just to show the difference in what the configuration options look like, the top F service now and the bottom here is the service or the Jira one to show that, you know, it's a little different configuration, but still going to have mere incoming, mere outgoing, you know, the basic fields there. All right. And now I'm going to hand it over to Abel to discuss classifiers and mappers. All right, so in this section, we're gonna dive deeper more in details about classification and mapping for mirroring. Uh, as with any other integration that we configure in XOR uh, that can fetch incidents, uh, one of the first steps is that we need to address this classification and mapping. And the classifier obviously will control what incident type will be associated with the fetch event. And the mapper will control what field will be mapped to the raw incoming event into one of our incident field structures. Uh, both of these types are uh, of particular importance with integration that support mirroring, since both processes will occur on every sync cycle from the third-party application. And this is very important to note. Um, this is by default one minute for most of our integrations. Um, and in the case of the mapper, uh, for bidirectional mirroring, in this case, we have the distinction that we have an incoming mapper and an outgoing mapper. The incoming mapper, as the name suggests, will control what fields are mapped into XOR and uh, similar to other mappers outside of uh, mirroring. Um, and the outgoing mapper will control what fields from XOR, either custom fields or system fields, will be mapped to the third party application schema. Um, we have here on the right a couple of examples. Uh, for one incoming mapper and outgoing mapper. And right now uh, we are gonna be demoing with an incident type custom that we created called threat hunting demo. And as we can see, the threat hunting demo uh, mapper 
are copied from the ServiceNow uh, default out of the box mapper. Uh, at the bottom here, we're seeing the outgoing mapper. So for instance, in ServiceNow, we have three levels of security. We have low, medium, or high, whereas in XRO, we have multiple um, levels of severity. And in this case, we need to do that uh, mapping from one tool to the other. Um, uh, one other thing to remark is that all fields uh, that we're going to be using for the third party application are linked to the custom incident type. By default, the service now, most of the service now um, fields are used for all type of incident types, but uh, we're going to present in a demo that there is one specific uh, field that is not associated with the threat hunting demo incident type. So we're going to we need to ensure that this is the case for all our incident types. And lastly, as um, Elliot mentioned earlier, uh, custom fields uh, are supported in some uh, applications. And in this case, I've configured a custom field from ServiceNow called U underscore X custom. So we're gonna present that in the demo section as well. Okay, uh, we have other settings that uh, are worth uh, mentioning here. Uh, so for mirroring to work, XR uses a minimum of four system fields to keep track of the third party app and all the updates. Uh, these are what we call the big four and these are debug mirror direction, debug mirror ID, debug mirror instance and debug mirror tags. These are system fields and most of the time are transparent to the user and we don't really need to be aware of them. Uh, however, in certain scenarios, uh, as we're going to cover in the demo section, uh, we need to set them in order to enable mirroring. So we're going to take a closer look at that in the demo section. Uh, other fields uh, that are important, important to notice uh, are the debug dirty fields, the debug current dirty fields, and debug mirror last sync. And um, we have the descriptions here as to what each one of them do. do. And uh, lastly, we have some special server configurations, um, the sync mirror job enable and the sync mirror job delay. Uh, these control when uh, just enable or disable the mirroring job, as well as how often the mirroring job will kick in. By default, this is one minute and we recommend customers not to change any of these values. Okay, uh, let's talk briefly about some limitations and some troubleshooting guidelines before we go into our demo section. Uh, first thing is that mirror can be a complex process, especially because uh, it has many moving parts, i.e. the uh, classifier, the mapper, the incident types, the permissions, etc. cetera. Uh, misconfigured mappers um, are, can affect what fields are mirrored into XOR as we saw earlier. Um, incorrect permissions is one of the most common issues when setting up mirroring with uh, ServiceNow, JIRA, and other tools. Um, one thing to remark is that mirroring does continue to occur, occur even after the XR incident is closed. Um, also, mirroring two applications simultaneously, like what is called to a mirroring, is not currently supported. Uh, this is if we have, let's say, the ServiceNow incident and we have another integration that supports mirroring like Curator, we cannot uh, change a field in ServiceNow and expect that field to be changed in Curator after passing through XOR. That is currently not supported, um, but one um, workaround about that is to use field change, change trigger scripts so that those can be kicked in whenever a field is changed in XOR and therefore be updated on the second third party app that we are using. Uh, there is no clear way to clear the dirty fields. Um, these are um, changes that are not reflected on the third party app. Um, one thing to notice is that the, the misto service interruption can break mirroring as well. So one important thing to notice. And as for some troubleshooting general guidelines, um, we uh, always um, recommend to check the logs uh, for the integration to set the integration log 
mode to debug. Um, check also in context data for the incident that we're mirroring that the big four, uh, the fields that we talked about earlier are set. And also check that the mappers are properly set for all the fields, all the fields that we uh, are intending to map. Um, also very important, check that the third party application permissions are properly set, this is especially uh, common with uh, ServiceNow since it has a very complex uh, permissions uh, configuration and also verify the entry tags. So that covers the slide deck. So now we are gonna jump into the demo section. All right. Let's pull it All right, thank you, Elliot. So today uh, we're gonna be demonstrating the mirroring functionality between XOR and ServiceNow and what all this process entails and both when the mirroring is enabled in XOR and where the incident is fetched and mirrored from ServiceNow. So the first thing that we're gonna do for the first use case that we're gonna cover um, when mirroring is activated in XOR is take a look at the ServiceNow integration and how it is set up. <clears throat> uh, all right, so let's take a look at the configuration. In this case, we have the instance set to do not fetch and we do not have a classifier set and we have a custom incoming mapper and a custom outgoing mapper. Additionally, we have other configurations here that are set by default. We are not going to be touching any of those. And on the incident mirroring direction section is where we're going to configure the integration to mirror both incoming and outgoing. We have also the option to select get incident attachments if we want to get those from the third party app. Here in this section, we have the entry tags for comments, for work notes, for file entries in and out of XOR. <clears throat> Finally, in this section here, we have custom fields to mirror. Uh, as I mentioned in this slide deck, we are using these, uh, this field from ServiceNow that we're gonna mirror back into XOR. Um, lastly, we have the closed mirror XOR incidents, uh, checkbox set so that we want the XOR incident to be closed after the incident is closed in ServiceNow and this is the closure method. Here we can we have the option to select close or resolve. So that kind of covers the configuration for the ServiceNow integration. Let's talk uh, briefly about um, <clears throat> Let's, let's cover briefly about other configurations that we have in terms of incident type, incident fields, uh, layouts, playbooks, and mappers. So the incident type that we have created is called threat hunting demo. And this incident type has a default playbook threat hunting demo and a layout threat hunting demo. The incident fields, as I mentioned on the slide deck, uh, we are checking that the service now fields are assigned to the threat hunting demo incident type. And as we can see, most of the service now fields are associated with all incident types except this one. So for this one, I came here and added the threat hunting demo as part of the incident fields that are gonna be inherited in this field. Uh, as for the layout, 
I'm gonna show briefly the layout for this incident type. So this is a, a standard uh, layout uh, applied to this incident type that we're gonna be using for the demo. And the only distinction here is that we are adding this tab service now ticket that I grab from here and put it in here. So this is gonna be tracking, keeping track of all the updates on the field from ServiceNow that are mirrored. Let's take a look at the playbook that this incident type will be executing. This is a very generic manual uh, playbook. This can be of anything if, if you guys are using um, any other um, process. So here, a generic uh, is triaging investigation. And here in this section is where we are going to be creating the service now to get and enabling the mirroring. And we'll continue with investigation and closing the investigation eventually. Lastly, let's take a look at the mappers that are configured for this uh, incident type. So if I come here to the integration, I'm going to pull up the, both the incoming and outgoing mapper for our incident type. So as we can see, these are all the fields are mapped on the incoming mapper. Uh, if we take a look at the service now, service now ticket, we can see that this is exact same fields. And basically what we're doing is copying this incoming mapper for the incident type service now ticket into our red hunting demo incident type. Similarly, for the outgoing mapper, we can see that for our incident type red hunting demo, we pull from the instance. We can see that we have some fields mapped outwards, meaning these fields are going to be updated in service now when we change them in service. So with all those basics covered, let's go ahead and create the incident and see how all this magic works together. So first, I'm going to go ahead and create a threat uh, hunting demo incident here. And I'm going to specify the name, Red Hunting Demo. And I'm going to say WannaCry Ransomware Investigation. Then I'm going to be conducting. I'm going to say that the security is pretty high. And the playbook is going to be the Friend Hunting Demo. The alert category here that I modified in my layout is going to be security. And the subcategory in this case is going to be ransomware. These are categories and subcategories that are already predefined in service now so that I know that those exist. So there will be no problem creating them in service now. So that should go ahead to service now and create our ticket. First, I have a couple of manual tasks here that I need to complete. And there's, this is the section where it's gonna go ahead and create the service now tickets. This is, these are the uh, arguments or the fields that are populating when created the ticket. Um, I'm using the service now instance that I created with mirroring. I, I am defining some um, fields here, static with some static values. I am setting the custom field, um, the salmon group, the color ID, the business service, short description, content type, et cetera, et cetera. So if I come here now to service now, if I refresh the page, I see now that my ticket got created. And if I open that ticket, I have all the fields that I populated. So at this moment, the uh, mirroring functionality should uh, start kicking in. 
and I should be able to see in a minute these fields populating with all the information. These fields are going to be populated based on the information that is built in from the service now ticket on the next single cycle. Let's give it a minute. <clears throat> And as we can see, all these fields got populated when the sync and cycle took place. So the next thing that we're gonna demo is, I'm gonna put a comment on this section service now comments. Please take a look at endpoint U R five six two zero. And since we are using tags, when we tag this comment with the right tag for comments, which is comments, we should expect to get this comment mirrored out to the service now ticket. So actually it happened really fast. So now we have the comment here. Um, the same thing if we do a comment uh, scan has uh, endpoint has been scanned and no thread has been found. We're posting a comment. We should see on the next syncing cycle that the comment was posted here on XOR. This also works with attachments. So let's say that I want to attach a log file. Elliot, if you have a hand, some sample of the log file that we can attach to this. Elliot. Ah, yeah, I was pulling it. Uh, how about an image? That work? Yep, that works. All right. Awesome. Thank you. So now we are uploading an image. And we need to go to our war room. And when this file is created seems like it didn't take it i think we forgot to press save on it oh you're right you're right so let's Try one more time. Let's upload it and hit save. Thank you for that, Elliot. So here we have the file, and the next thing we want to do is add the tag for files. And the tag for files is for service now. Now, just adding that tag should on the next sync cycle, upload the file to our service now ticket. Let's give it a minute. And there we go. We have the file uploaded from XOR. So one last thing that I want to showcase here is the closing the ticket in one system and auto closing it on the other. So for this one, I'm gonna go ahead and solve it and this has been taken care of and i'm going to go ahead and resolve the ticket in service now if i go to the ticket remember that we put the closing method 
to be closed. So by doing state resolve, we'll not close it in XOR. So I'm gonna go ahead and resolve it and then close it here. And that should trigger the action. So let's give it a minute here and the ticket should be automatically closed. And voila, we have the ticket closed in XOR. So that demonstrates the first part. I'm gonna take it back to you, Elliot, so that you can demonstrate us the mirroring when it is initiated from ServiceNow. All right, perfect. So now I'm just going to show the reverse of what Ables did. And I know we have questions in the Q&A. We'll get to most of them at the end. Um, one I will answer right now, since it kind of applies to what we're looking at, is from Kirk. And the question is the desire for the configurations to mirror information from our team service now, but only in cases generated from XOR. So essentially you don't want to have that, you know, cases generated in XOR from service now, but you still want that bi-directional. And the way you're gonna do that is essentially with the configuration options, you can see here, you have the option to set for fetches or do not fetch. And that's going to be the configuration option that you are going to want to change in your environment for this. Because essentially, you want to still mirror, so you'll still have the incoming outgoing mirroring direction, but you're just going to have it set to do not fetch. Because the fetch is essentially going to grab incidents from ServiceNow and pull them in. It's going to fetch that. But if you have the do not fetch on, it's not going to do that. It'll still create the stuff, and you'll still have a workflow in there to create a ServiceNow ticket and then have that mirroring. But that's what's going to allow you to do what you need to do in your environment where you only want to mirror for stuff created from XOR. All right. Go to here. And now what I'm going to show is the reverse of that is creating an incident in service noun, having it mirror over. So just complete opposite of what we were just looking at. And so IT services, assign it to the networking group. Please update firewalls. All right. Simple, easy, set to medium impact. Now we're gonna to want to submit that. And you see it's been created in ServiceNow. So it's helpful, you know, people go through ServiceNow to create requests, we can pull them in, then have both those mirror over. That's one of the common use cases we see for this. Boom, we can see it's already mirrored over into XOR. And then all the same things apply that we were looking at before and then people were showing such as the you know, bi-directional mirroring, the functionality of tagging information. Um, one question, we another question, and we'll get to a lot of these, like I said, can the tags be applied by default, Joshua? Um, you can apply tags by default for some tasks. You can have them automatically tagged. Um, but by default, like if you're just doing something in the war room, you know, if you're typing in information, then it's not going to. Or if it's something that comes from there, you know, that you manually put in, then you are going to still have to tag it. But for tasks, you can have it automatically tag the results within the task. And that would look like we went to my threat hunting demo ones. So actually it's a work plan. It would mean actually look at the task for that. Pull that information up. All right. 
and Josh has had to go over to the playbook section to show you because you have to edit it within the playbook that you have run on the task, but you can tell it to tag the results of a given task with a specific tag. So it's helpful if you know you're running a workflow that maybe is enriching IP information, um, anything like that, and you can have, and you know that the, there's gonna be results outputted that you need to have mirrored, you can put that tag in here so that it'll automatically be tagged every time this is run. So you could put comments, work notes, if it's file or service now. So you know every time it runs, goes through the playbook, it's gonna automatically tag that result so that it gets mirrored back to the system. So now for here, let's see here. I'm looking through some of the questions we have too, so we can get caught up on some of these. Hello, we have a question from Binapma and saying mm -hmm. when the mirroring is on, for example, on QA or instances, when offense is updated, does those change go through the classifier and mapper again? Yes. Mm -hmm. The changes in one, uh, external application will be mirrored and the classification and mapping process will kick in every time. Perfect. And then another question from same user is regarding, do we have support for bulk sync? Will we be a single incident at a time? Can we do bulk sync for if there's 10,000 ServiceNow tickets? Currently the integration has to do 10,000 calls. Right now, there's not support for bulk sync. It is still that one-to-one -one mapping for those syncs coming across. Um, and that's just for the sync portion, though, after everything's been created. If it's fetching incidents, then you can change the number in the incident settings or the integration settings for how many you want to fetch. But as far as the sync for that mirroring, that is still you know a, a one API call. Another question from... Adnan, how to handle Docker container timeouts, um, which can cause mirroring to fail. So that is actually a configuration setting, which I will type into there. But essentially what that is, is you need to add a configuration setting to your server. And it's going to be a uh, you know, key value pair, like all the settings is going to be Python pass, extra. I'm typing this out for everyone, so you'll have it, keys is going to be the key and then the value is going to be an environmental value and you're essentially you can do it two ways you can set the new timeout value per integration or system-wide so if you want to set it system-wide it will look like quest timeout equals and then your timeout value. So for the one I just answered for that for Adnan, the answer I put in there, that will set the new timeout value system-wide. If you wanted to set the timeout value for uh, integration, then you would change that environment variable to be request dot timeout or underscore timeout and then dot the integration name that you want to set it for. So that you're telling it the exact integration. Okay. A couple of questions from Mick. Uh, can I use mm -hmm. Cortex default fields for mirroring or do I need to create custom ones? Uh, absolutely, yes, you can create, you can use the custom fields. You don't need to necessarily create the uh, new fields to enable mapping and uh, and mirroring. Um, another question from Nick is, will it sync the closing reason and type, for example, false positive and a description? So actually, yes, this is one of the things that we did on our threat hunting demo. Uh, so I'm going to pull up the outgoing mapper for the threat hunting demo. So as we can see, we have the close, 
the closed code in ServiceNow and the closed notes in ServiceNow are going to be equivalent to the closed reason in XOR and the closed notes in XOR. One thing to notice here that the closed reason in XOR are of four different types by default false positive, resolved, uh, duplicate, and other. So we want to make sure that in our ServiceNow to get those closing uh, codes exist. So if I go here and showcase again our uh, resolution, this resolution code is what I'm referring back to. So the resolution code, we want to make sure that it has the four types of uh, resolution reasons on XOR. So that will um, close the service now ticket with the same resolution code as in XOR, and also the nodes will be reflected as well. So if we take a look, in this case, we didn't use them, but yeah, it is it is possible. And vice versa, you can also add additional close reasons to XOR itself too, so that those codes would map up. So I see another one wearing a uh, demoing for the Splunk mirroring. Um, we're not going to do that demoing today, but I can send the link for the documentation for the Splunk mirroring for that. And then another question regarding the closing the incidents and the mirroring functionality. Um, does closing the incident in XOR affect the mirroring functionality? Uh, I think you reviewed that, Abel. Sorry, whoa. what was the question again? Does closing the incident next door affect the mirroring functionality? Um, not the mirroring functionality. The closing the incident in XOR will also can be also um, mean that the ticket will be closed on the third party app if we chose to do so in the integration settings as we demonstrated. All right, so more questions. Is it possible to reopen an incident in XOR if ServiceNow adds a new node? I don't think by default it's going to reopen. Is that correct, Abel? Yes, that is correct. So another one. Can we have a link to the snow ticket from XOR? Take a button to go to that snow incident. Um, yeah, you could set something up for that. So you could set up something that would grab the URL or the link or add it to a URL and to go to that incident. And you could set up maybe even something within the incident layout that would have the, you know, go to snow incident. So you could click on that and it would actually open up the snow incident for you view in snow. Um, another question here um, on the Q&A uh, from Simon. Uh, previously on the slide, it mentioned that double mirroring is not currently supported. A bit confused on that. Could you elaborate more? Yes, uh, this is when the problem is that XOR uses four fields to track 
the third party application and all the updates. And um, when we enable those, when we enable mirroring, those full fields are taken by that application. So we cannot have a second application using those four fields again. So that's why it's kind of mir uh, limiting the option to uh, use two mirroring uh, applications at the same time. We cannot have a uh, service now of data ticket that secures back into XOR, XOR incident, and then XOR uh, do mirroring with Curate, let's say Curate or first block, and reflect those changes to mirror out to those third party applications. That is currently not working. Hope that answers the question from Simon. All right, let's see here. Uh, anonymous, if I have a playbook to create a ticket from data queried from Splunk, can I include an attachment from Splunk in the ServiceNow ticket? Yes. That would be the functionality that we're showing for. Let me show it. So you'd have to have that mirroring set up. And let's say you query information, you just need to tag it as such in order to add it to it. Or there also is, if you're doing it outside of mirroring, for example, so let's say that the playbook you have is specific, is not necessarily doing mirroring, but you still want to include an attachment from Splunk to the ServiceNow ticket, then you can still do that as well. So you can do it within the mirroring just by making sure you're tagging it appropriately. Um, the tag for the files is from XOR for, for ServiceNow, so it tells it to send that attachment over. But vice versa, if it's separate and it's not necessarily in the mirroring piece and you still want to attach information, then there are commands for the ServiceNow integration that would allow you to update the ticket and add attachments to it. Let's see here. View Taiwan. Uh, where do we get the URL value? That will be your specific instance for, you know, Splunk, Jira, ServiceNow. Um, that's going to be your URL value for the integration configuration, people. just as, for example, like this is just our, our dev instance service now that we use. And so that's what you put in that URL. Uh, another question from Sawadi, is it possible to not allow service now to close exit incidents, but keep syncing notes? Yes, uh, on the service now, integration configuration, there is an option to select not to close the extra incident and that will uh, execute the mirroring, but it will not affect the closing mechanism. So it will continue to sync notes, uh, work notes, comments, files, etc., but it will not affect the closing. All right. And another one for you, Abel, I think we reviewed this, but just to confirm my understanding from Zimmon, if I were to set up a snow mirroring, then I would not be able to set up Splunk mirroring because of the four fields being taken by snow. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Is it possible to trigger a playbook or automation in the XOR incident through changing the state or a field on the mirrored service now ticket? Technically, yes. Um, you could have a field change script for a certain field so that if it does get changed to a certain value, you could tell it to perform a certain action, to change other values, to run a specific playbook. Um, so you can configure that within a playbook and per field.
Someone asked what version is required for mirroring in 6.6 and didn't see an option for an outbound mapper. Um, mirroring is supported from starting at like 6.0 on. So you should definitely, you know, you're definitely able to do mirroring with 6.6. .6. Um, you should have outbound mappers as well. It might just be, I know we've changed kind of in the UI, the names of certain or the path of certain configuration options. So I'm not sure if that is what it is with that, but you definitely have the capability for mirroring in 6.6. Six. Switch over to quick. Moving over. This back. All right, we will still continue answering questions. Um, you know. Keyway takeaways, you know, summed it up, you know, ensuring correct integration configurations off the bat. That's where most people run into a lot of issues. Um, and correct mappings are essential to successful mirroring. If you don't have mappings there, or even if you have custom fields, the data might not transfer over. Um, another thing, takeaway two, especially source now is permissions. Those can be finicky. So making sure that you're following the docs and assigning that role that you are using to set the integration instance does has the correct permissions. So you can successfully do the full mirroring because that can affect stuff such as mirroring notes and comments and attachments across. All right, let's get some more questions. Let's see here. You just um, from you yeah, I got a question here from Vinamra. Um, it says that if, if there's support for custom ticket tables, um, for example, the default ticket type is incident, but they use a different uh, table in ServiceNow for their tickets. Um, yes, that is possible. Um, it has to be configured on the ServiceNow integration settings. What type of uh, ticket or table uh, will be ingested. And especially important is the permissions because I've seen mirroring work with one ticket type, um, whereas it will not work for the other. So it's very important to check the permissions on the other ticket type that you want to configure. We'll try to get to the rest of these. Um, also, there is a survey at the end of the webinar. Um, so, you know, after today, it's really helpful to have you guys fill out that survey because it lets us know what we can improve on, if this is helpful, you know, what topics you'd like to see in the future so we can kind of steer the next webinar in that direction and really make sure we're covering topics that are relevant to you and teams. I think we answered the close ticket, the open snow. Yes, Kirk, yes, we will give you a link for this recording um, in a deck so you will have this to review, look at, um, look at everything. Can you disable mirroring from inside of the playbook for a specific incident? 
that one kind of depends because they're you know by default set for the integration instance so it's really going to be from that um within a given playbook there's not necessarily a command to tell it to not do the mirroring especially if let's say you're already fetching incidents and you already pulled the information over then it's already going to be mirroring that information so it's more integration wide Um, there is another question um, from Joshua uh, that I uh, answered, but for anybody interested, um, he was asking if they want to enable mirroring for a custom integration, how to do that. There is a very comprehensive documentation in our portal that talks about how to set the integration to enable mirroring. So I'm going to be dropping that on the chat as well. And then another one for you, Abel, because I think we reviewed it too, but from Zimin, we mentioned or earlier, it was mentioned the mirroring will continue to work after the export incident is closed. Could we elaborate a little more? Yes. Um, when the incident is closed, the mirroring functionality will continue to work. So like any other further changes in service now will be reflected in the in the ticket in XOR and vice versa. And I think we are pretty much at time. There's another quick one for that. All right. So I know we still have a few more questions. Um, try to get answers out to those, which is the fact. Um, and then we will be providing you with the deck and then also recording of this presentation so that you will have the recording, review it. Um, if you do have any questions or any follow-up items, you're going to reach out to ourselves or you can also reach out to your CSA or CSEs prospectively. Um, but yeah, uh, we really hope everyone enjoyed the presentation today. Like I said, please fill out the survey at the end because that is very helpful for us so we can steer the next conversations, the next webinars to really see how we're doing and make sure it's relevant to you and the team.